Here is my college football top 12 in order of how they're going to finish in the 2024 season. And I tell people all the time, call your shot. Don't come back on the back end and say, oh, I knew that. Nah, nah, player, you should have said it on the front end. You guys make sure that you like, subscribe, tell a friend about the Unafraid Show, and keep coming back for all this college football content all season. At the number one spot, the Georgia Bulldogs. Georgia hasn't finished outside of the AP top seven in any of the last seven seasons, and the average finish has been third over that span. Kirby Smart's ascent at Georgia has mirrored Nick Saban's one single digit win season followed by absolute dominance. And if any team is guaranteed to get in the playoff, it's Georgia. With five of the top 15 teams in the country on their schedule, they could even go nine and three and still be a lock. Number two, the Oregon Ducks. Now, Dylan Gabriel is the perfect plug and play replacement for Bo Nix at quarterback. And Oregon's pass rush should set them apart as one of the best teams in college football. The trick is gonna be for Dan Lanning to keep them focused until the meat of the schedule, starting with Ohio State on October the 12th. Number three, some people say Clemson or Miami will win the ACC, but I trust Mike Norvell to get Florida State there just a little bit more. Cause Norvell took five players from the portal from Alabama and nabbed eight SEC transfers in total. But his most important addition was DJ Uyangalele from Oregon state who's going to try and pick up where jordan travis left off last season number four utah has a 35 year old cam rising no nah, i'm joking he's not that old but he was in the 2018 recruiting class and cam rising is throwing to a 30 year old brant keithy and the entire fan base flamed the idea of being in the Big 12 until they had no choice but to join. Now the Utes better win that conference or the old bullies of the Pac-12 South are gonna get experiencing some bullying of their own. At this point in time, you might be asking, wait, George, Utah is the fourth best team in the country? Well, let me explain to you how the top 12 is going to work. It works just like the NFL playoffs. The division winners get the first four spots. And that means the SEC, Big 10, Big 12, and ACC, their champion is going to be in the top four spots with everybody else slotted behind them. Number five, the Texas Longhorns. They have not had expectations like this in a long time, but they earned them last year. Now, between the wideouts they lost to the NFL and the running backs this year that they've lost to injury, there's a lot of pressure on Quinn Ewers to prove that the previous decade of mediocrity and Coach Sark's history of single-digit win seasons are permanently in the past. Number six, Ohio State. I ain't even gonna hold you here because Ohio State is probably good enough on defense to go six and six without ever rolling their offense out on the field. And it'll be interesting to see if their new offensive coordinator, former UCLA head coach Chip Kelly, and their new transfer quarterback, Will Howard, can ignite something sustainable in a soft non-conference schedule and carry it over into road games in Eugene, Oregon, and State College against Penn State. Number seven, Ole Miss. They are 16 and six under Lane Kiffin in the SEC in the last three years against everybody not named Nick Saban. And now that Nick Saban has moved on, I feel like there's only one coach standing in Lane Kiffin's way, and that's Pete Golding. Pete Golding is an excellent defensive coordinator, and Jackson Dart might be a Heisman contender in 2024. Plus, they have the number one transfer class heading into this year, so not making the college football playoff would be a huge letdown for them and their boost. Number eight, Penn State. James Franklin has stacked three top 15 recruiting classes in a row, and it is now or never. And I think that they can get to the college football playoff, even if they don't get stellar quarterback play. But if Drew Aller actually plays like the giant that he is at 6'5 and 240, they have a chance to win the whole thing. But Penn State fans, they got to be holding their, they got to be clutching everything saying, please let this be the year because you have an opportunity. Number nine the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Marcus Freeman just put together a top seven scoring offense and defense in the same season. And Notre Dame has averaged a top 12 recruiting class 
over the last three years. So this team is ready. They are stacked. And he's been proven to be a good coach. And if the Irish can get past Texas A&M in week one, they might have a shot at their first undefeated season since 1973. Because this schedule is not the toughest that you ever seen in your life. Number 10, the Alabama Crimson Tide. Their quarterback, Jalen Milrow, and new head coach replacing Nick Saban, Kalen DeBoer, should be a fun marriage. Because look what we saw out of Michael Penix at Washington with Kalen DeBoer. And Jalen Milrow's running ability, my lord, I am excited and why I think he will be on the Heisman stage. And I expect the Crimson Tide to score a lot of points and get better as the season goes on. And I am much more worried about Alabama falling off in the 2025 season than I am in the 2024 season because this roster is still stacked. Quarterback is great. And uh, yeah, and they still got some beef up front. Number 11, the Miami Hurricanes. Because Damian Martinez and Cam Ward would have been two of the five most exciting Pac-12 players this year. But the whole league broke up. And now these two took their talents to South Beach. And Miami has Sam Brown, Kobe George, Xavier Restrepo, giving Cam Ward three receivers that had at least 800 yards last season. And this might be the first Mario Cristobal offense that is Mario Cristobal proof. One of these group of five teams has to make it. And some people think that Boise State is going to be there, but Boise State's got to play Oregon. And if Oregon knocks the doors off of them, ah, the committee's going to be looking like, do we really want to see that again? Number 12, the Liberty Flames. When Caden Salter decided to return to Liberty out of the transfer portal they became my group of five pick to secure the final college football spot in 2024 salter was the conference usa player of the year in 2024 and now that smu is part of the acc i don't see any g5 teams out there that are better than the flames but any single loss with a schedule as soft as theirs will open the door for a team like i said boise state to possibly take this spot 